Harry here, this is Laura Potato, and this is What If Naruto Was Trained by Hidon, part 5. So, part 4 was like 3 months ago, so let me do a recap for that. But before I go into the recap, let me say something before. That, what's it called? Yes, I am doing Yuji What Ifs, and I know I gotta finish those. Well, I mean, I, I am going through the manga, because fuck it, the anime is gonna take forever a while ago. But yeah. Uh, but of course, not the point, uh, what's it called? Let me just go into this what if. I am going to do part, I think, six or, was it six or five? I don't remember. For what if Naruto, uh, had a lightsaber, but yeah. Of course, those are the two what ifs I'm actually gonna do for this week or next week or another. Uh, we'll try to possibly end it in some kind of day. But not the point. I also am going to keep uh, going on What If Naruto Has Sunshine. I just haven't watched that one, and I didn't really have that much time, but yeah. But not the point. Let me go into this What If, and let me shut up, okay? So, let me go into a recap. So, last time that happens was Naruto was, well, with his brother named White. Naruto kind of left the underworld because Naruto kind of was kind of trained two years in the underworld. He was a Joshiness now. Well, he's not a Joshiness, he's Joshin. His last name isn't Naruto Uzumaki Hatake, it's Naruto Joshin. That's the last name that he kind of took from the fact that he was adopted into the Joshin clan. The Joshin clan contains a uh, Joshin himself, a man with kind of whitish hair, very tall, and of course has a red coat, has no shirt, red kind of pants, well, kind of like red armorish pants, black pants, well, also kind of black. Black sandals, but of course, it's kind of palish white and has horns. This is where he also has black rods on his back, but yeah. Of course, this is where, well, he has two other sons and they are kind of older. There is, well, Subin, who's actually 20. I did mention that he was 18, but I want to make them four year apart, but yeah. So, of course, Subin is 20, and of course, he's a person who has kind of. Think of it like Virgil's hair, but in some of my what ups, I did mention that he kind of had like Dante and the Virgil, but just think of it like Virgil's hair. Of course, where well, he does is able to manipulate metal on a very, very interesting way and in how to control it. Mostly being able to melt it, control it in like particle dust release and all that, or just able to just use it solid. So liquid solid or even like dust style or even a uh, gas style but yeah of course not the point that's who is sylvan then there is well the second brother who is also adopted they are both adopted who is named white joshin white is basically just what he looks like from the tower of god think of it like that of course is where well he has whitish uh hair and like whitish eyes of course he some point has a crown and is able to manipulate soul that's what his kind of chakra is based on, manipulating souls. Of course, then there's Naruto, who is 12 years old. Silburn is 20, uh, White is 16, and Naruto is 12. Of course, we're, well, Naruto is able to control lightning and very powerful types of lightning. He is a Hatake mixed with an Uzumaki. Of course, um, I should mention one thing. Their heights, Silburn's height is 6'9", uh, so 6 feet nine yeah you get the point six point yeah yeah, yeah you know what uh, yeah that's how he's tall and all that and of course then there's Sylvan who's actually six six while Naruto's actually I'm gonna just say five eight because he's still twelve but yeah of course is where well Naruto is actually kind of being with uh, Sylvan into the overworld of course is where they met uh team seven Naruto did kill a lot of people in the land of waves so mostly everyone in the land of waves Kakashi wanted to attack, well, try to defeat Naruto, but this is where Sylvan appears kind of uh, getting away with Naruto and all that. Even though Sylvan could have easily destroyed Kakashi, he didn't want uh, Naruto to get hurt, even though Naruto's regeneration is super good. Of course, Naruto has also met Kurama, but yeah. Now, of course, it worked well. They left, and of course, the work Kakashi was in mad rage. Of course, he confronted, well, Horus and Saratobi, of course, asking why he didn't talk about Naruto Uzumaki Hatake, his nephew. Of course, the work, well, Horus tries to manipulate Kakashi into getting Naruto just to transform him into a weapon. 
to protect Konoha because Horuzen has a dark twisted side into only using those people like tools. He only saw the Hatakes as tools. The only person that didn't see, uh, well, Horuzen as this great per uh, powerful person was someone named Sakamo Hatake, basically Kakashi Minato's father. And yes, Minato in this one is a Hatake. Of course, it worked. <clears throat> Minato was as fast as the lightning. That's why he was called the Yellow Flash. Still, like in the original, uh, what's it called like the original canon because his lightning was a yellowish color. Of course, it worked. Well, he still had kind of, well, he had silver hair instead of being yellow, but yeah, just like the other case. Of course, it worked. Well, Kakashi's lightning is blue, and Naruto's lightning is actually completely different from normal lightning. His he actually has all different types of lightning, all all going a range of blue, yellow, purple, like very lightish blue, then white, black, and even the last one being well something called negative lightning. It's a very powerful lightning that actually hurts Naruto, even if his regeneration is the most fastest. But yeah, it's unstable. It's this unstable lightning that Naruto can barely control. But yeah. Of course, it worked. Well, not the point. Let me go back into uh, Kakashi. Kakashi left the village after kind of making a lightning strike. Come down from the sky and smash it into Horuzen's office. Of course, Horuzen tries to kill Kakashi, but Kakashi flee, uh, well, fled towards the Death Forest, meeting Anko and taking Anko with her snakes. Of course, already knowing that Horuzen is going to just kill them both. So, of course, he rather takes someone that he kind of decently like or whatever, just because of her snakes being kind of helpful. So, that's why Kakashi took her, but yeah. <clears throat> of course, multiple people were told a kind of lie about Kakashi and Anko being betrayers, like betrayers to the Leaf Village and should be executed on site, but yeah. So mostly Horusen was sending propaganda towards everyone, but yeah. Of course, the where Kakashi was kind of talking to Anko, Anko was crying, but of course, the where Kakashi tried to convert and tried to help with the sealing of the, what's it called, snakes. This is where he met Manda, well not Manda, mostly Manda's kind of like father and all that, the White Snake Sage. This is where, well, the White Snake Sage, uh, mostly the White Snake, uh, yeah, the White Snake Sage of the kind of scroll of the snakes and all that, met Kakashi and actually gave him a proposal. That uh, he would let Tosaka Uncle be able to seal off her snakes into the snake scroll, but killing uh, Orchimaru would be one of those kind of, uh, well, kind of, um, uh, what's it called, not bad, I would say, it's like an arrangement for just to seal them, but yeah. Of course, where, well, before Kakashi left, he actually met two different other types of snakes that were actually bigger than the white snake stage, and of course was just teleported thanks to the fact that he actually connected towards the snake contract. But before even signing the snake contract, he instead signed the serpent contract. Him and Anko signed the Serpent Contract thanks to, well, one snake that was white and name was Ying, or not Ying, it was named Yang. And of course, there's the black snake that was actually kind of had reddish eyes, and of course was named, well, the Ka, uh, Yang, or Ying. Wait, Ying, Ying is, Ying is the darkness, why are Yang is the, okay, wait. Okay, so I was just saying that correctly, okay. So, of course, it worked. both of them were talking to, well, uh, Kakashi and Anko about summoning the uh, serpents and all that. Of course, they have an existing summoning contract together, but yeah. Of course, it worked. Well, uh, Kakashi was talking to the white snake that was on top of him. And the white snake that's on top of him is named uh, Shin... Shinden. Well, I'm going to call him Shinden. Of course, the word well, Shinden kind of talks and all that, and it's actually the one to actually be able to comfort well, Anko and kind of help Kakashi. So, yeah, of course, we go into a couple of month time skip from well, those two, but of course, let me go into Naruto and well, uh, what's calm? Well, Naruto and White, but this is well, the end of the recap, so yeah, it took about like fucking however many minutes, but yeah. But let me go into this what if and let me shut up. So we go into Naruto and well, White. White is right now taking some of the praises that well the Joshiness are kind of giving. Well, both Naruto and White. 
And mostly uh, a bunch of people are right now praising them because they are basically the sons uh, for their Lord. That being Joshua, but yeah. Well, they see both Naruto and, well, white as gods amongst men, but yeah. Of course, they work well. With that happening, they kind of just keep praising them. And of course, we go into a time skip of, well, Naruto and, well, White being in the human world for three months. Of course, it worked. well, Naruto and White has met, well, someone like Hiran. Hiran was still sacrificing people. And, of course, this is where he says, for the sacrifice, Lord Joshin. This is where, well, Naruto says, ah, Hiran, when they first met. This is where Hiran says, ah, Naruto. Huh, you actually got him taller. And more, I should say, better. This is what, well, Naruto smiles and says, yeah. <laughs> this is what, well, uh, Hiran looks up and then sees, well, White. White says, ah, oh, hello there, Hiran-san. This is where, well, Hiran says, oh, hello there, uh, White's, uh, Sama. This is what, well, White says, no need for any kind of, I should say, proper manner. I do not mind. Besides, you were someone to look over for Naruto for his past of his life and all that. So yeah, Naruto came back from well the underworld to see you. This is where well he don't say, uh, Naruto, why are you like this? Why not? That's where Naruto smiles and all that. This is where well Naruto's teeth have actually became much sharper and all that. Even though he was been in the underworld for yeah. He's kinda of became like half demon, half human, but yeah. Of course it worked well Naruto is saying, but we can go kill people together. Yay! We're both sacrifices, right? This is what, well, you know, someone else says, I guess so. This is what, well, both of them start to kind of jumping up and down, kind of like uh, skipping in the grass. But yeah, I think of it like Gojo, what he does most of the time, but yeah. But we go into Anko and, well, Kakashi. Kakashi really changes look to be looking straight up like Gojo. He straight up look like Gojo. This is what, well, he has, well, whitish hair instead of having silverish hair. Like, he changed that shit to dyeing it. Of course, whitish hair. He actually grew a couple more inches and actually became, like, 6'1". And this is where, well, he's actually much more thinner and kind of buffer. But, yeah. Of course, this is where, well, he straight up just looks like Gojo a little bit. But, yeah. And in those three months, he's already met the god of, well, lightning himself. Mostly the lightning serpent. Well, someone connected to it. But, of course, it worked. Well, uh, what's it called? Kakashi met him. Mostly the lightning serpent. And it was this kind of, like, storm serpent that was made out of lightning until it showed its actual true self. But, yeah. Let me show you what it looks like. So, this will be, like, his element form. The serpent that was in, like, he was made out of lightning in the clouds. But, yeah. Well, this is how the true lightning serpent kind of looks like. It's actually true self, like his physical self and all that, instead of being made out of lightning. But, of course, that's what, uh, well, uh, Kakashi met. And, of course, this is what, well, Kakashi trained under the serpent, but, yeah. His name was Raijin. Well, yeah, Raijin, <clears throat> the lightning serpent. Of course, it worked. well, he helped Kakashi in training his lightning and being much more potent and able to make a weapon. A weapon that's called Susano, a sword, mostly. It's mostly given from the god sword. Mostly, this lightning serpent has a connection with a god called Susano. No, I'm not talking about like Susano from the Sharingan ability. No, basically Susano, the god, the god himself, Susano. And all that. If you want to know what it looks like, but yeah, let me show you. This is what he will kind of look like. Okay, Susano. This is what. Kind of Susano would look like mostly this a uh, version, but this is just something that I kind of like looking at. But yeah, it's a, it's a cool drawing, okay. But uh, what's called Kakashi has his sword and it's made out of purely lightning, it was a sword but can actually transform to a lightning blade. But yeah, so this is well, mostly the first blade that what Kakashi has is like a katana, and that second one that you well, I mean, the first one you saw it was mostly the actual blade, but yeah. So the first image is, well, the kind of true form of Susano's blade. And that second image was mostly the katana version. But yeah, Kakashi mostly has the katana version. He hasn't actually unlocked the lightning version. He unlocked some sparks around the sword, but not much of a strong blade. And how to actually use the lightning itself. 
the uh, not dragon, mostly the serpent named Raiten is mostly helping Kakashi and controlling his lightning better. But yeah, of course this word. Well, Kakashi is right now just training. Of course, he has both of his eyes being black. One of them is actually still a Sharingan, but it's actually showing to be black instead of well, of the Ka. His Sharingan, but yeah. But of course, when he does activate his Sharingan, it isn't the same reddish color anymore. It's actually this bluish color. It actually evolved into becoming his own Sharingan, thanks to his Lightning Infinity. You see here, the Hatake's Lightning is actually one of the most potent and the most powerful Lightning users in the whole fucking world. For, well, in this what if, okay? But of course, no one knows about them being very powerful. Even though their Kega Kenkai doesn't seem to be that strong, it just looks like to be just normal lightning. Don't take them lightly because, well, they will still be able to fuck you up. Sakuma was someone like that, able to destroy people with a very powerful lightning that he was able to use. And that was called White Fang Lightning. Basically being able to control white lightning, but yeah. Then there was Minato, no, uh, well not Minato no Mikaze, but Minato Hatuki, Kakashi's older brother, who was also known as the Yellow Flash, thanks to this yellow lightning cloak around him. Or mostly a yellow, uh, goldenish lightning color around him. Able to be dancing around him when he uses the Flying Raichen. Then there's Kakashi, the, well, the copy ninja of 1000 Jutsu, but now changes into, well, the god of, well, lightning, or mostly the controller now. And then there's Naruto, who doesn't actually have a title right now, but yeah. And Kakashi, I'm still thinking of the title, so that one is just like a little temporary that I think about, but yeah. But, right now, this is where, well, Kakashi's training like that, and this is where we go into Anko. Anko has kind of became much more slimmer, of course, and where, well, she still wears her kind of like brownish kind of coat and all that. And still, like, nothing underneath, but yeah. Of course, well, mostly the fishnet, but yeah. Of course, her hair is now a lightish purple, and it actually became way longer. Of course, it went, well, it became towards what we call, like, all the way her hair kind of became to the height of kind of being near her elbows. Of course, it went, well, it's a lightish, much more purplish color, but yeah. Of course, her eyes are still kind of, I forgot, well, they're brown or purple. Yeah, I'm going to say purple. But of course, it went, well, she's able to transform people into stone. Thanks to her good looks. The goddess uh, snake that she actually trained under was, well, in her humanish form was called, well, Boa. Her humanish, uh, well, human form was called, uh, was called Boa, or mostly Hancock. Hancock, Boa, or something like that. Of course, so what, well, she was a very beautiful lady in her kind of human form. But in her actual serpent goddess snake form, she was actually called Medusa. The goddess of transforming any man into stone. So yeah. Of course, Uncle was actually amazed with Boa. Mostly that she called her like that. Or Medusa slash Medusa, whatever. Of course, it worked well. Medusa was fine with what's called Uncle calling her anything. But yeah. Of course, it worked well. Uncle actually was able to have the ability of transforming people to stone. Mostly with their hormones and all them other things. Mostly when they look at Anko, they kind of become extremely in love with her. Just like it was called for Boa, like in One Piece, but yeah. Of course, it worked well. She can actually transform those people into stone when they glance at her and even feel love for her. Well, this kind of false hope of love and mostly this lust and all that. But yeah. But if it's truly love, then she won't be able to defeat that. But yeah, she would then have to actually use a physical jutsu. Or physical abilities to actually transform people into stone. But yeah. But mostly there's this kind of ability around her that's kind of like limitless. And yes, I already mentioned it, but I want to explain even more. That's when people feel lust around Anko, they will transform into stone. Just pure stone. If it's not true love, then they will actually transform into well, stone. Or if it's not lust or love, or it's just they just don't give a shit. Well, they will not be able to transform into stone. So, yeah. Of course, Uncle has been trained with Medusa for a while, but yeah. Of course, this work. Well, Uncle also has an. Well, she then has similar other abilities that Mother Med uh, well, Medusa was able to teach her and actually able to give her abilities. But yeah. When people don't actually fall for a kind of lust uh, domain around her, or mostly like a shoe around her, um. But she then has to go to physical touches and actually attack people, but yeah. <laughs> or looking at people. 
This is what, well, her first, uh, well, ability is called the Stone Eye. Mostly are the Stone's Eyes. This is where, well, her eyes will become purplish slick and all that. Well, it kind of like dark purple slick in her, well, eye and all that. And there's kind of light purple. And of course, this is where her hair will kind of go up thanks to her snakes and all that. Or mostly snakes that will be on her hair and all that. Or, well, not on her hair mostly. It's mostly her hair becoming into a jutsu and kind of making them into snakes. And of course, she wasn't just look into people's eyes, transform into stone. But yeah, out of fear and terrifying. But yeah, of course, it worked well. She would also be able to touch people with just with bare skin. If she managed to either scratch them or manage to touch them physically, she will actually manage to transform that part of the body into stone. Of course, she can also kind of spread it like a virus, the stone ability, but yeah, it would just be called stone virus, but yeah. Of course, it doesn't matter if she doesn't touch you, she, well, it doesn't matter if she does touch you. She needs to touch you either in the skin or even in your clothes. Your clothes will mostly be able to transform into stone, but with that stone, you will be kind of unable to move that far, but yeah. And she will be able to touch you and kind of like turn into stone, but yeah. Of course, Uncle has been, well, what's it called, talking to Medusa a lot, but yeah. Of course, well, well Kakashi has became way stronger and thanks to writing, but yeah. Of course, well, Medusa has told Anko just in case anyone dares to attack her, to summon her out. Mostly by adding a lot of chakra out, but yeah. This one right is the same, but this time uh, Kakashi has to use a lot of lightning chakra, but yeah. This one, well. They both understand it. This is where, well, we go to three months. Both Kakashi and Uncle has been, well, kind of on the road together. This is where, well, Kakashi looks down and looks at Uncle. And Uncle looks up and kind of looks at what well, kind of glances at Kakashi. This is where, well, Uncle says, I didn't expect you to become taller from the last time we met each other. That was about two months, shouldn't it be? Kakashi says, yeah. This is where, well. Kakashi's eye is still pretty dead, and of course, the only reason he doesn't only train like this is because he wants his little brother, well, not little brother, little nephew like Naruto back, but yeah. Of course, he doesn't feel any lust or anything towards Anko, but yeah. It's where, uh, what's it called? Shinmu, yeah, Shindo? No, Shindo? Is it Shindo or Shinmu? What the hell did I call him? Oh, fuck. Wait, let me actually remember. So his name is Kaid, and of course, it's where, oh. He's kind of on top of for Kakashi's head, and of course, Uncle is sad and that Kaid won't be on top of her head. That's where Kaid is, is just like sleeping on there, but yeah. Kakashi says, so, we're just gonna keep going around here and kind of defeating these random ninjas. That's where Uncle says, I guess so. Unless you want to go f try to figure out where your little nephew theft, then we can go try. Hmm. Sure, looks at that. <sighs> Huh, <sighs> sorry about that. Of course, Kakashi and Anko decide to disappear out of thin sight from some people following them. Mostly these were Ambus and Ru Ambus, and of course, before they were even able to notice where they were gone, half of them would turn into stone, and the other half was just right now just destroyed in an instant way, a lightning flash appearing right in front of them and disappearing. But yeah. Of course, this is where Anko says, I guess the Leaf Village still wants to kill us. That's where Kakashi says, yep, pretty much. That's where, well, Anko says, uh, I won't be able to get Dongo. Kakashi says, oh my gosh, shut up already. And help me out with my little nephew. That's where Anko then thinks about it, and right now she grins the evilish smirk. And says, how about this, Kakashi? You buy me Dongo, and I'll try to help your well, little crisis of trying to find your nephew. How about it? And so where Kakashi thinks about it and says, fine. Fine, I'll accept it. This is where, well, Uncle grins and says, good. <laughs> this is where she sums out some of her snakes and even other serpents are kind of small enough to kind of go figure out where Naruto will be at. But yeah. Of course, this is where, well, Uncle says, so, buy me dongo. Kakashi looks at her, sighs and says, fine, let's go then. <clears throat> She smiles and says, yay. Of course, we go into Naruto, uh, Hiran, and even what's called White right now, killing off some bandits. 
and even some ninjas from the leaf village but yeah Naruto kind of made a lightning scythe to rip them apart but yeah that's why he's laughing while killing what's it called leaf ninjas but yeah <laughs> <sighs> Sorry about that. Of course, it worked well. They keep doing it, and of course, it worked well. They kind of go on into well, we go into a time skip of about two months. Kakashi didn't get any word from Uncle Snakes, and of course, Uncle Snakes did come back, and none of them were that, that hurt, but yeah, but yeah. Of course, they can poof away into the Serpent Tantra, but yeah, they just wanted to come back to kind of tell Uncle that they didn't find really anything. Of course, Uncle and Kakashi are kind of near, well, the Mist Village. And, of course, Naruto is nowhere near the Leaf, uh, well, not Leaf Village, Mist Village. He's actually kind of near the Leaf Village. Well, kind of. But, yeah. They're mostly there, mostly White and Hidon are there to rip out some of, what's it called, the civilians of, well, uh, the Leaf Village. Just because they want revenge, but, yeah. This will work, well. That happens, and of course, Naruto's easily killing some ninjas, but yeah, by using his lightning and erasing them from, in, well, from, from existence, but yeah. Of course, we go into, um, of course, it worked well. After, well, those three actually managed to kill a lot of people, that's what, well, they go back into just walking around the kind of four great nations. Of course, it worked well. Naruto actually fell down, well, kind of underground. This is what, well, both White and uh, Hidan say, Naruto! This is where Naruto fell down under a cavern, and this is where he's looking around confusedly. This is where he goes up to a stone wall and confused. This is where the stone wall has these pattern of different moons. Like it has quarter moon, half moon, full moon, quarter moon, half, yeah, you get the point. This is where Naruto kind of presses his hand into, well, the wall to kind of look at this closer. But then realize he activates something. And, of course, something kind of sucks him into somewhere. This is where Naruto's confused and says, where the fuck is he? But, of course, it's all darkness until something bright actually appears in front of him. Right now, something is chained up and, of course, can barely move. But, yeah. It seems this person is kind of chained up. Of course, this person seems to have, like, a horn... Or a mask or whatever. Of course, both of her eyes are closed. And this is where, well, she's all chained up. And of course, swords are kind of nearer, but not that much. Mostly these, like, moon patterns are kind of nearer more. But yeah, in the background. But yeah. That's why Naruto's confused. Until he kind of keeps getting closer. But this is where lightning actually hits him. Like, this resistant lightning smashes into him. This is where, oh, he gets pushed back and says, What the hell just happened? This is where, well... Naruto's kind of annoyed from the fact he was smashing by lightning, and this is where, well, he then sees that this kind of female seems to kind of struggle with pain and all that from the lightning just crackling around her, and this is where, oh, he's like, uh, this is where, huh, Naruto's like, uh, what should I do, I don't really care about humans, but she doesn't look human, fuck it. This is what Naruto says. I know I'm gonna hate. I'm gonna. I know I'm gonna regret this, and I know that Kurama's going to hate me, White and even Hina. But screw it. This is where Naruto's hand right now crackles, crackles while white lightning, then black lightning while it was crackling white and black, then it just transforms into nothing, with this then unstableish lightning to his hand. This is where Naruto says Chidori. This is where. Well, he only thought of this name because it came up to the head. And of course, he smashes the kind of unstable lightning, kind of unstable Chidori, you know, into these chains. Right now, destroying the chains in an instant, but of course, burning his hand. Son of a bitch! This is where he kind of falls backwards in pain. And of course, this is where, well, he then looks up, and this is where he sees the girl right now looking down at him. Of course, this is where, well, she seems to be similar age towards Naruto. And this is where, well, she then grabs Naruto's hand and kind of, like, pulls him up. Even though his hand, it was the one hand that it was kind of with the stable less lightning. Well, kind of crackling around him because it does burn his hand. Of course, that was the hand that she grabbed and, of course, pulled him up. That's where she was actually starting to heal well, Naruto's hand. This is where one of her eyes are kind of purplish and the other one is a crystallized dark bluish color. This is where, well, her hair is right now flowing and defining gravity right now by kind of just blowing in the wind but yeah even though there's no fucking wind here but yeah of course to work well she is kind of like looking at naruto confusi 
and why Naruto did this to her, or why she even was free. This is where, oh, she then asks why did Naruto free her, or, well, she doesn't know Naruto's name, so of course, she just asks why this person helped her. This is where Naruto says, uh, good question, don't know. You don't seem human. She then nodded, she's not human at all. This is where Naruto says, oh, that's good to know. Yeah, I thought I actually helped the human. This is where she looks confused and says, why? This is where, well, Naruto says, oh, it's because I don't really like humans. <laughs> this is where, well, she then looks at him and says, aren't you human also? This is where she looks confused. Naruto says, uh, not really. Everyone called me a devil ever since I was a younger kid. I'm mostly a demon or anything, so I guess I take that to heart to say no, I am a demon. This is where, well, she then looks at him. Understands, she's really close towards Naruto. Naruto's right now, his face is kind of reddish. This is where, well, he knows a little bit of love and all that from the fact that, well, uh, Subin usually shuts, doesn't really shut up about the, well, he does and all that. He doesn't really say that much, like, perverted stuff or anything around Naruto because he's not really much perverted, but yeah. <clears throat> But White, on the other hand, would actually like to tease Naruto a lot. Even Joshin does the same. This is where, well, Naruto say, uh, you're so close to me. This is where she said, oh, sorry about that. These orbs appear around her or behind her like what's calm. These eight orbs behind her appear. One of them are fully black and the other one is fully white. But yeah, of course, these are mostly the moon phases. So yeah, of course, so what, well. Her hair is very like bluish color. It's kind of looking like galaxy a little bit, but yeah. Of course, the word. Oh. She then says, "Well, can I know your name?" This word. Well, she's done healing Archer's arm, and this word Archer is shocked to see his arm was fully healed in like a couple of seconds. This word. Oh, Naruto says the name's Naruto Joshin. Yes, sir. She says Joshin. Interesting. I have heard that name before. Hmm. This is what. Oh, Naruto says. Uh, yeah, um, this is mostly being from the underworld, I'm mostly adopted, but don't worry about that. <laughs> this is where Naruto says, what's your name? This is where, well, she then says, oh, my name is Luna. Luna, the kind of, well, she says, her name is Luna the Night Stars. This is where, well, this is where, well, mostly her last name is Night Star, but yeah. Think of it like Morning Star from what Lucifer Morning Star, but instead I'm just gonna say Night Star. But yeah, this is where oh, Naruto says that's kind of a beautiful name. This is where Luna's face becomes a little bit bluish color and all that. And of course, the word well, Naruto says, well, how do we get out of here? <laughs> I kind of fell and kind of came with her own accident. Luna says, oh, it could be easy. This is where she kind of taps the air, and this is where it cracks and ripple. And this is where well. Both Naruto and Luna are out. This is where, well, Luna is right now floating right now in the air. And this is where she then lands down. But this is where she almost falls down. Now, of course, this is where Naruto manages to catch her and says, are you okay? Luna says, it's been such a long time. I haven't actually felt my legs that much. I've been floating in that space for so long. This is where Naruto says, what happened exactly? And why were you in there? She then felt way too uncomfortable to actually talk about her past. So, of course, she kind of ignored the question. Naruto realized that that was such a stupid-ass question to say, but yeah. That's a word. Well, uh, Naruto says, <laughs> Oh, we should probably get out of here. That's a word. Well, someone makes a rope out of sewers down there. He then kind of just tells Hidan to hold on to this rope and not to let go. Or he's dead. That's a word. Well, Hidan says, Aye, aye, Kathy. <laughs> or, well, not make what's it called, Soul's Rope. He mostly just lands down there by flying down by making Soul Wings. Now, of course, these whitish wings appear behind him. He lands down and says, no, no, but so? This is where, well, he then looks at the girl that's right next to Naruto and both, well, Luna's actually 5'8", and she's actually the sim uh, similar age of, well, with Naruto, 12 years old. She might have looked kind of older in that picture, but for right now, she's 12. But yeah, that's what, well, Naruto says, this is Luna, Sylvan, I mean, not Sylvan, White, that's what White says, uh-huh, interesting, whatever, Naruto, what the fuck happened, this is what Naruto kind of explains a little bit, and what really happened, this is what, well, White understands and says, well, Luna, uh, Nightstar, nice to meet you, 
Well, I should really be going. This is where, well, Luna decides to also follow along by kind of floating up. But of course, when she tries to stand next to Naruto, she falls again. And that's where Naruto has to catch her. But yeah. <laughs> Naruto is right now just <laughs> smiling. But yeah. This is where, well. So, of course, Luna is right now just going with what's called Naruto. And of course, can barely walk. But of course, after a couple of minutes, like only like one minute of walking she started walking by herself and easily doesn't need naruto as a crutch somewhat but yeah of course this is where, well they keep walking of course luna is right now feeling great about walking and doesn't need really use naruto as a crutch because she was kind of reverse and kind of need naruto to kind of walk but yeah of course naruto didn't really mind and didn't really care it's a work well uh, White was right now trying to think of so many ways to kind of tease Naruto now. That's what, well, somewhere in the underworld is kind of like laughing, saying, So, I see. So that is what she's forbidden or seal away. It's been a long time, Luna Nightstar. That's what, well, Joshi said. This is what, well, someone in the corner kind of heard this. Well, somewhere, not in the corner, mostly somewhere in a different kind of place of the inner world kind of heard this. Open his kind of like goldenish, reddish eyes. And this where, well, his blondish hair is right now crackling by the light right now, just making it really shiny. His wings are appearing behind him. They kind of look like angel wings, a little bit, a little bit darker. That's where, well, he then heard something that he hasn't heard a long time ago. Night star. What? This is where, well, he he just turns around and said, Did I hear that right? Did I heard? Hmm. Interesting. Well, I wonder if she would be interesting just like her mother. <laughs> this is where he walks away, but yeah. This is where, oh. We go into Naruto and, well, uh, Luna kind of walking together, but yeah, of course it where they're embarrassed because yeah uh, White has been just making a lot of well was it called teasing and teasers towards Naruto and Luna, but yeah It's a word. Well, their face has become red. Well, mostly Naruto's face is kind of like a reddish color while well Luna's uh, face is kind of like a bluish color This is a word. Well uh, so, uh, Not so but white really just like teasing them, but yeah but of course, it worked. well, we go into, well, uh, then kind of going back into the underworld. But before going to the underworld, they had to deal with some clown ninjas, some, well, what's it called, sand ninjas and other things. And of course, Luna managed to wipe out the cloud and even sand ninjas by using one uh, kind of technique, star magic, star radiation blast. That's where she blasted and obliterated these people. That's where Naruto says, whoa, that's powerful. <laughs> this is where well, Luna's face says, thank you. This is where, well, she mostly is blushing, but yeah, from the compliments that Naruto gave her, but yeah. But yeah, that's happening. Of course, I keep saying yeah, other things, because I mean, I am getting kind of tired. But I'm trying to kind of, well, uh, end this, well, yeah, I'm going to end this part right now. Of course, this is not the end of this what if, but yeah. Of course, what's it called, uh, I am going to do what's called, what if Naruto had the lightsaber? Part I forgot, but uh, I am going to do it after I take a shower and then go. Well, I'm not go to sleep, just take a shower and then come back. But yeah, other than that, have a nice potato day, potato night, potato seat, potato potato. It will be uploaded the same day. But yeah, bye.